Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you watched my video last week about the best mid-range processor, you would have seen that Qualcomm uh, come out at the top with the Snapdragon 710 and then below that they have the Snapdragon 670. Well, now that I had done that and sort of published it, guess what Qualcomm did? They announced a new processor in the 600 range, the Snapdragon 675. So if you want to find out all about it, please let me explain. Now the Snapdragon 675 is a really, really interesting processor, but not for the reasons that you're probably thinking. In terms of where it fits in the overall scheme of Qualcomm's mid-range processors, it, it's a bit confusing really, because you have the 670, and then you have the 710, and then you have this 675 that's meant to be better than the 670, but not quite as good as the 710. And we'll actually do a comparison of all three of those uh, in just a moment. And funnily enough, it's actually got a slightly worse GPU. So it's actually got the Adreno 612 in it compared to the Adreno 615. And again, we'll do a comparison about that uh, in a moment. It's got the same modem as the 670, it's got the same DSP as the 670, and it's got roughly the same uh, image processor, but it is a bit enhanced, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So why is the Snapdragon 675 so interesting? Because it's using a fourth generation Cryo CPU core design. And no other processor in Qualcomm's current lineup uses a fourth generation Cryo CPU. So what do I mean by fourth generation? Well, the uh, Cryo core that Qualcomm designed itself in-house is what we find in the Snapdragon 820 and 821. Then the second generation Cryo, which is the built-on Cortex uh, technology uh, version of the cryo core we find in the Snapdragon 835. The third generation, which is also built on uh, Cortex technology, we find in the uh, Snapdragon 845. And now the fourth generation one we find in the Snapdragon 675. So what is this fourth generation cryo core? Well, basically it's a Cortex A76 coupled together with a Cortex A55. So how Qualcomm decided to use this fourth generation cryo CPU core is in a six plus two configuration. It's still an octa-core processor. However, there are two uh, high performance cores and there are six power efficiency cores. And that's a similar setup to what we find in the Snapdragon 670 and the Snapdragon 610. But more interesting, what it tells us is that for sure, the next 800 series processor that Qualcomm launch will definitely be using the fourth generation Cryo CPU. So that will be a Cortex A76 and a Cortex A55, but probably in a four plus four design. So you get four high performance cores and four power efficiency cores, just like the 845, just like the 835 and so on. So let's have a look at the rest of the Snapdragon 675 and compare it to the Snapdragon 670 and to the Snapdragon 710. So as you can see, all three processors use this six plus two setup. All three of them use six 1.7 gigahertz uh, Cortex A55 processors. But when it comes to the performance cores, they are using the A75 for the 670 and the 710. But now in the 675, it's been bumped up to the Cortex A76. And when it comes to the GPU, we find that the Snapdragon 710 has the best GPU with the Adreno 616, followed by the Snapdragon 760, which got the Adreno 615. And then surprisingly, the Snapdragon 675 has the Adreno 612. But we'll talk more about that in a moment because Qualcomm say they have been tweaking it to give uh, better gaming performance. Then all three devices support the same low power DDX4 uh, RAM. Some of you were asking in the comments, what does the X bit mean? It basically means it's even more power efficient than standard LPDDR4, it uses less uh, voltage. They've got the same DSP across all three, which is the Hexagon 685. Then for the image processor, it's now a modified version of the Spectra 250. It's a 250L, which actually introduces 480 frames per second HD slow-mo, that's in 720p, which you can now only get in the 675 in the 600 series. Of course, some of this is available in the 800 series. 
Then you've got the X12 modem, exactly the same as the Snapdragon 670, and then Quick Charge uh, 4 Plus and Bluetooth 5.0. One interesting final point is it's now built on an 11 nanometer process, whereas the other two are built on a 10 nanometer process. And I think that probably much indicates that it's built using Samsung's fabrication process because they did announce that they were about to roll out an 11 nanometer process. And I don't think TSMC do that. So this will be built by the looks of it exclusively on Samsung's uh, fabrication plants. So just going back to the GPU for a moment, although it's the 612, which is technically uh, not as good as the 615 and the 616, uh, Qualcomm are saying that they have actually really heavily optimized the gaming performance in this particular GPU. And they have a list of games that they say work much, much better using this particular GPU and that it's removed 90% of the janks whatever that's meant to mean. I suppose it's meant to mean stutters and, and drop frames, I guess. Other than that, the 600 range continues to be very strong. You've got things like support for up to six cameras, three on the front, three on the back, which means you can have sort of super wide and normal focus and then kind of telephoto zoomed in. There's support for things like uh, portrait mode and bokeh in the background, the support for uh, any kind of face unlocking that an OEM wants to implement. There's a whole bunch of things that Qualcomm have put into their processes that make them very, very useful for these mid-range phones. And in fact, the 675, actually looks like a really nice processor and as I said earlier that really does show us what's coming in the next generation flagship in that 800 series. Okay my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do give it a thumbs up. Please do also subscribe to the channel and do hit that bell notification icon so that you get told every time I drop a new video. Okay that's it. I'll see you in the next one.